welcome to the channel. My name is Tyler Fikes. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Today, we are out for a little drive. I'm going to get some parts to work on something at home. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to drain your train horn tank. It's something that you should do probably at least once a year. I'm bad about it. I've never done it on any of the train horn tanks I have. So all it is is, you know, you got a big thing of compressed air and you got a pump, a compressor that's compressing air right into that tank. And of course on cold mornings, foggy mornings, anytime there's moisture in the air, which is pretty much always where I am anyways, it's bringing that moisture in with it. So you get the moisture inside of the tank Water on metal leads to rust. That's obviously not good for the tank. It's not good for the lines running to the horn. Not good for anything. It's not good for the horn either. So I am gonna be draining the tank on this truck and the other truck, and we're gonna see how much what, if any, comes out of the tank, and that'll kind of give you how often you should do yours. It's super easy to do. So I'm gonna finish up with this. We're gonna get back home, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to drain your tank, and then we're gonna see what comes out of the tanks. If anybody has not heard, we're passing a railroad crossing right now, so it's perfect timing. That's the train horn. So yeah, I do have a real train horn on my truck. If you haven't seen it, go check out the original couple videos. I'll link them down below. And now you can hear the compressor running. And that was just what I was talking about. Possibly drawing in moisture with the air. So it has a filter, but you know, filters only can filter so much. So I will see you guys back at the house. All right, so we are back home and this is all the tools you're gonna need, flathead or any kind of screwdriver and a little adjustable wrench. You can see I got the tank right there. See, it's getting a little nice and dirty. And this is the drain, but we also have a little relief valve right there. I think it triggers at like 250 or something like that. Uh, but that little pin you can pull and it blows off the pressure. So I wanna do that before I just open that and have 200 PSI shoot straight down at me. So I'm gonna use the screwdriver to hit that loop and pull it without having my hand right there. And you'll probably be able to see some moisture get shot out of that. And then once it's drained enough, we're gonna open that up. And you might be able to do it with your hand, but you might not. So that is what the wrench is for. Use eye protection, of course. Maybe some gloves. So I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna go for this guy right here. Yeah, it's too old. Put on there too long ago for me for me to be able to do it with my hand still. But with a little help from a wrench, see it comes right out. And holy shit. I did not expect to see that much. I hope the camera caught that, because that is a ton. That, that, and it was white and milky. I'm gonna let it drain a little more before I pull that all the way out, but I am gonna pull that all the way out. That's weird, it's reverse thread. That actually makes sense. So that doesn't come all the way out. You just drain it like that. And then when it's down here, it's sealing. There's obviously like a plunger that you're pulling down to seal it. So that's pretty much drained. We got a ton of stuff out. And now I'm curious to see how much comes out of the Dirty Max. Put that back together now. And then I'm gonna go soap it turn the compressor on, let it get up to pressure and then soap it and make sure it's not leaking. Uh, make sure I'm not leaving a leak or else the compressor is just gonna keep kicking on and running itself. And that is disgusting, but it looks like there were two maggots inside of the tank. I have no clue how they would have gotten in there, uh, but that's pretty gross and probably not good to send maggots through the big train horn back there. So definitely maintenance you wanna do to your tank. Now I'm gonna go back the Duramax out just a little bit so I'm not dumping all of that stuff in the garage. 
and we're gonna do the same thing to that. Meanwhile, I'm gonna start this up, let it run, fill the tank up. All right, and we got the same setup on the Duramax, so we're gonna do the same exact thing. First thing is first, I'm going to drain a little bit of pressure and it's actually pointed right at me. So, so there it is. And now we're gonna open the drain plug and still have a lot of pressure. So that's why you want to drain your tanks, I guess. Uh, definitely something I'm going to start doing more often than once every two years. So same thing with this. I'm going to start it back up with the compressor, fill it up, put it back in the garage, and soap it and make sure it's not leaking anywhere. Lots of nasty stuff came out. All right, we're getting up to pressure. The compressor's loud as hell. I'm gonna soak that, literally just soapy water. Make sure it's not bubbling. No bubbles, so no leaks. And you can see that compressor gets hot. It, it boils the water off when I spray it and cool it down. And the compressor finally shut up. You can see there's still a ton of water down there. So that all came out of the tank. So that to me is definitely a very valid reason to drain that tank at least once a year. I was shocked. I, I really didn't expect to see that much. I expect that I'd pull the pressure plug and see a little bit of mist come out and then pull that and maybe get a couple of drips. And I would have pictured it to be black. Um, not sure why it was all white and creamy looking. Maybe that's just because it was under pressure for so long and because of how fast it shot out, it just got a bunch of air mixed in with it. But if you have a actual reason, leave it down in the comments because that's just my kind of speculation slash guess. But anyways, hopefully that helped one of you figure out how to drain your tank or if you have one, helps you to know that you should go drain your tank. Definitely something, just another maintenance part you gotta do on the truck if you're gonna have a train horn or a compressed tank of air on your truck for whatever reason, whether you have bags, train horn, something else. Just another maintenance thing you gotta now keep up on. Not a big deal, it took me like five minutes to do two trucks, so definitely easy enough. And hopefully now that you know that it's something you gotta do, you'll be able to take care of it on yours if you have that. Anyways, thank you all for watching. If you guys liked the video, liked the truck, or found it helpful in any way, give the video a thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more of these trucks, they're on the channel all the time, so hit the subscribe button. Like I said, down below there will be the original train horn videos. I have a couple of putting them on both trucks, so go check that out if you're interested. And if you want to know where to get one of these horns, I also linked Horn Blaster's website down below. That's where I got all of my horns, and that's the only spot I would go to get train horns. And definitely after having train horns on my truck, it is a modification that I'm going to have to have on every truck that I ever own for the rest of my life. It's just, you know, once you have it, you can't go back to not having it. So it's super worth an upgrade. If you don't have one, links down below, consider checking it out. Thank you all for watching and until next time, see you later.